Grace to you all and peace and welcome this day to worship. As we observe the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, we continue our focus on the fruits of the Spirit and today's focus will be on the gift of peace. As you sign and pass the friendship pads, I would invite those of you who are visiting with us to include your address or phone number um, so that we may respond uh, to any request you may have of us. Given that this is a holiday weekend, we will celebrate communion next Sunday. The youth um, mission team and their adult leaders left the church yesterday morning at 7 a.m and arrived in Peru about 11 p.m. last night. Then they were scheduled uh, to uh, get up at 5.30 this morning for their final flight to the mission site. And uh, Jane's note said, uh, we're learning who are the early morning people in our group. <laughs> if you'd like to uh, follow their posts uh, about their mission trip, the updates that they give, you can go on Facebook to Oakmont Presbyterian Youth Group, Oakmont Presbyterian Youth Group. Two weeks from today, following the, this worship service, uh, we will host Michael and Rachel Ludwig, who are mission co-workers in Niger. We'll have a luncheon and uh, time to meet them and to hear about their good work um, in Niger. So that we may prepare for the number who will be coming we ask that you put Ludwig on the friendship pad if you'll be uh, coming to the, to the um, discussion or uh, call the church office, one or the other. And honestly, we're hoping to have a respectable number of people present, so. Uh, the first Sunday in, uh, the second Sunday in September will be our homecoming Sunday. And our plan is to honor the members of our church who are 90 years old or older, uh, who will be 90 years old or older this year. There are surprisingly quite a few, but we hope our list is complete. So if you or someone you know is 90 years or older, if you would let us know that, we would greatly appreciate it. We want to welcome our guest soloist, David Knapp, uh, today to worship. David is the son of Joanne Knapp, and the late Bruce Knapp. We're glad that you're here today. Lastly, if you enjoy singing but cannot commit to the weekly choir rehearsals, we have an opportunity for you. Next Sunday, the summer choir will be gathering at 9 a.m. Uh, in the choir room upstairs uh, to uh, rehearse a number for next Sunday. So if you'd like to sing, um, we invite you to be part of that and uh, just join the choir at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Let us pause to prepare for worship.
Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and listen, children of God. Let us depart from evil and do good. How great you are, O God! We praise you for your care of this world, for the bounty that you have given to us, for the mercy that you show us. We strive to love you with heart and mind, soul and strength. Amen. Let us confess our sins together using the prayer of confession in the bulletin. Eternal God, you call us to faith and not to anxious toil. We confess that we have not always lived by faith, nor have we known how to place our trust in you. Stress a lot in our hearts. 
minds and bodies, and our lives become disordered like a chaotic world. We have not always responded to the needs of those around us, and sharp words have separated us from those we love. God of transforming love, forgive our sin, reconcile us to one another, and give us the faith of Jesus, who without the place he said, trust you and new peace. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you have the words of eternal life. We would hear, help us to listen. We would so live. Help us to receive. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 131, and the second from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Children, would you like to join me on the stairs? Good morning. morning. Who here has ever felt scared? All of us. How about worried? You've all felt worried before, too? Has something ever really bothered you? Me too. I get scared sometimes, and I worry a lot. I always worry. My mom used to call me her worry wart because that's all I ever did was worry. And it was really silly of me. I would worry about what I would wear to school. I used to worry about what... I would play on the playground with my friends, or if anybody would choose me on a team in gym class. I used to worry about all kinds of things. And you know what? As I started getting bigger, I started realizing that even though I was worrying about things, the end result usually turned out pretty good. I mean, I usually got picked for a team, not last. Once in a while, I was last, but hey, everybody is every once in a while. And I usually found a friend to play with on the playground when I was growing up. I usually found an outfit that didn't look completely silly, hopefully. And you know what? No matter what it was that was on my mind, I realized, you know, it's okay. It's it's okay. Things, Things will work out fine. And then... When I started praying about, my, about the things that I worried about, 
And as I got bigger, my worries got bigger, so I pr started praying even more. I realized, I don't need to worry at all. I don't need to be afraid of things because Jesus made a really awesome promise. He promised to always be with us, no matter what. And he sent the Holy Spirit to live in my heart and your hearts too. And because of that, God is always with me. I don't have to worry about a thing. He's taking care of me. Yes, Abe? God is in Jesus, they're in all of us. You're right. So why do we have to worry? They have everything under control. There's no reason to worry. So I've decided that I need to stop worrying so much. It's not doing me any good. God's got it all under control, and that gives me such a peace inside because I know no matter what I worry about, God's going to handle it, and it's going to turn out okay. Let's pray about that. God, we thank you for the awesome peace of having the Holy Spirit in our hearts and having you with us every day through any challenge, through any worry, and, the, and for the, the comfort and peace of knowing that no matter what, you've got this, and we'll be okay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To know the full power of those words, it's helpful to know the story of the author of those words, Horatio Spafford. In the great Chicago fire in the Windy City, 1871, Horatio Spafford was an attorney who had uh, many investments in property, and he lost a fortune. He decided that he would deal with all of his losses by pouring himself into his work and by assisting the over 100,000 people who were left homeless. In time, he decided that he would go uh, to Europe to hear two Christian speakers uh, with whom he was close, but business uh, delayed him. So he sent his wife and his four children on ahead of him and saw them on to the ship on which they would sail. The ship uh, eventually had an accident and, and struck an iron steamer. And in a short amount of time, the ship went down. His four children perished. Only his wife survived. He booked a ship immediately to join his wife. And as they sailed across the Atlantic, one cold night, the captain of the ship came to him and said, this is about the place where your wife's ship went down. He went back to his room, and as you can imagine, he had trouble sleeping, and it is then that he wrote these words, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. In the agony of his loss, when he was suffering greatly, he knew the peace of God. Not the peace of saints, but the peace of sinners. The peace available to you and to me. For John Greenleaf Whittier, 
The pathway to God's peace was to end our strain and stress and our strivings. He wrote this prayer, Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Because peace is such a cherished gift for us, it is a welcome discovery that we make that it is no small side concern of Scripture. The Bible reveals that peace is central to God's plan for humanity. For unto us a child has been born, to us a son is given. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the priest Zechariah sang of what God was doing through his son, John the Baptist, who would prepare the way for Jesus. He would give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. And when Jesus was born, the angels sang glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God favors. This leads us to the first truth of scripture about peace. Authentic peace comes from God. As the psalmist affirms, the Lord will bless his people with peace. And Jesus taught, I've said this to you so that in me you may have peace in the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And the night before his arrest, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We would all likely agree that those words describe peace as we envision it, Neither let our hearts be troubled, or neither let them be afraid. But the context of Jesus' saying was that he was about to suffer and to die. This leads us to the second truth of Scripture about peace. God's peace is not dependent upon the physical or material circumstances of our lives. Think about it. From a human point of view, we think peace comes when all is going well. At the end of my vacation a week ago, I said, we all left healthy and happy, and I was at peace. But God's peace is not subject to that at all, not dependent upon the circumstances of our lives. Paul wrote to the Philippians this, do not worry about anything. Worriers, <laughs> do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Do not worry about anything. And do you know when Paul wrote those words? While sitting in prison. While all around us the world is filled with troubles, God is faithful in watching over us and working through our lives. Sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes very painful things happen to us that change us for the rest of our lives. And yet we endure our trials and get through them, and our very presence here today reminds us of all that we've gotten through in the past, we are still here by the grace of God today. Paul had an insight that enabled him to have peace in prison. He wrote to the Christians in Rome and said, to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. It's one of those focus things. Remember that uh, drawing, black and white drawing, that if you focused on the black part, you saw an old woman with a long crooked nose, and if you focused on the white part, you saw a young woman in a flowing dress? 
Paul is saying that if we focus uh, on uh, the things of this life, the challenges, the dangers, our fears, that it's death. But to focus on the spirit in the midst of those things is life and peace. It's not that we're not afraid. It's not that we don't have worries. The question is, where will you put the energy of those things? Well, where will you put the energy of your concerns? By looking at all that could go wrong, the negative of that, or what God is doing in the midst of that. In the midst of trial, rather than focusing just on the trial, we can ask ourselves the question, where is God? And what is God up to right now? The third truth of scripture about God's peace is that while peace is a gift of God, we must embrace it. As Isaiah wrote long ago, those of steadfast mind you will keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. So my confession is that in the midst of the trials of my life, it's not like I was at peace and that you would look at me and say, now there's a man of peace. Or it's likely that you would not have said, look at that man, how strong his faith is. You probably would have said, look at that guy, he's shaken in his boots. But then the issue is, what do we do with that? Do we continue to focus on the fear or allow that to have full reign in our lives? Or do we use that energy to turn to God and to trust God's presence and work in our lives? God's peace can be known more by all of us when we realize that we are God's children. We're not solitary creatures left to struggle through this world on our own abilities. We are the beloved children of God, claimed in baptism, nurtured by God in the Lord's Supper, empowered by God through the gifts of the Spirit, gifted by God for acts of service, led by God for love of neighbor, shepherded by God through the darkest valleys of our lives, and one day shepherded from this life to eternal life. Embracing Scripture's story as our story, we realize more and more that our life is caught up and secure in God. Knowing that we are safely in God's care and that God is at work in us, Trials become moments for learning and maturing. Challenges become ways to grow in our trust for God. Painful experiences draw us closer to God. And in time, we discover God's loving work within us. As the psalmist discovered, we can calm and quiet our souls by trusting in God. Peace is our gift from God, but the condition is trust. Remember John Lennon's lyrics? All we are saying is, give peace a chance. I hope you will give peace a chance to become a greater and greater part of your life by growing in your trust for God. And let me say this. When I struggle in my trust of God, you strengthen me by your trust in God. And when our neighbor struggles in their trust of God, they're strengthened by our trust in God. So we work together and seek to grow in all of life, believing that God is not only great, but God is good. Amen.
On behalf of the session, I present Raymond and Emily, who've been received into the membership of this church by affirmation of faith. You come to us as members of the one holy Catholic Church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us. As you join with us in the worship and service of this congregation, it's fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promises of God which are ours in baptism. Hear these words from scripture. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Sisters and brothers in Christ, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered the world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of our promises made at our baptism. I ask you, too, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of their church, the faith in which you were baptized. Who is your Lord and Savior? Do you trust in him? Do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way, and will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Will you please stand? Sorry, I forgot to copy it. You can listen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number brothers and sisters in faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ to whom we give glory and honor forever. O Lord, uphold Raymond and em Emily by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. If you would turn and face the congregation. I'd like to introduce to you briefly uh, Emily and Raymond. Emily um, is a Myers. She happens to be Doug Myers' daughter. Some of you know Doug. Um, she grew up in Oakmont, and get this, um, works full-time and works uh, as a, and is a student nearing completion of her associate's degree. She is an avid runner, new to being a couponer, <laughs> and she hopes to donate supplies uh, for the homeless ministry and the food bank um, through her coupon work. Ray is a Springdale grad. I assured him that was not going to get him into trouble <laughs> here. He is an outdoors man, enjoys hunting, fishing, and competitive shooting sports. He also works full-time and is also a student working on his degree in business management and accounting. 
They live in Plum. They are incredibly uh, loving parents of their son, Damon, who surprisingly did not say much today. <laughs> As you will get to know Damon, you will discover he is a very verbal little child. So we welcome Ray and Emily to worship today. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for calling us into the company of those who trust in Christ and seek to obey his will. You have made us strangers no longer, but pilgrims together on the way to your kingdom. Guide us closer to you and to one another in the unity of the Spirit that our common commitment to this congregation um, strengthen us together for mission and service in your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Welcome. Glad you're here. Welcome. It's amazing how you can, you can be. I hope you'll have a moment after worship uh, to greet Ray and Emily at the lemonade um, stands outside. We've been asked to pray for Kyle Craig, and I would add uh, his father and mother, Jim and Sue, for Paul and for Kathy, for John, who is having a medical procedure on Wednesday. We'll pray for a good outcome for the mission team in um, Peru, and for Adam Veda, who's recovering uh, from a number of medical issues. Uh, he's recovering at the Willows. We want to um, remember as well on this holiday weekend our country and the various needs uh, that I'm sure most of us realize are present we want to remember the people of West Virginia as we've seen the pictures of uh, the great destruction from the floods and uh, for those who yearn uh, for peace. Let's continue to pray for Michael and Rachel Ludwig uh, during their furlough in the United States. Some of you who receive the uh, email prayer requests have seen the picture of this little guy, uh, Kathleen Schutz's uh, nephew, and uh, we've been praying for him. There are copies of this in the vestibule. Uh, she sent this email update yesterday. Sawyer is, uh, he's recovering from the rota virus. Sawyer is still in the pediatric intensive care unit and still quite sick. They're going to be doing a surgical procedure today uh, to place a Broviac central line so that they can remove the femoral line, which has been in for six days now, and has an increased risk of infection after seven to 10 days. 
he will have to have anesthesia for the procedure. This line will allow them to provide him nutrition since he still has diarrhea. I guess we can be honest and say that from the pulpit. And he is not able to, touch, uh, to tolerate much through his intestines. However, he so does seem to be feeling better and we were able to get a smile from him yesterday for the first time in over a week. Uh, Kathleen says, I'm planning to drive back to Pennsylvania uh, today and we'll be bringing uh, the little boy's siblings, Simon and Sylvia, um, to stay with their grandparents in Butler. We appreciate your continued prayers. And also to report that Bugs Bagamary is making progress. Uh, Marcia sent an email update that said he's graduated from a walker to a cane and she's greatly encouraged. So we give thanks for his progress. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for the blessings of summer, for the morning sounds of birds, for the flicker of fireflies in the night. We give you thanks for the summer activities like leisurely walks. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ in our church. We thank you for the newest members and for those of long standing, for the young and the old and for all in between, for the fellowship of love that we enjoy, the fellowship that new, you nurture among us, we offer our thanksgivings. While we are different in many ways, Help us to hold fast to our unity in you. Today we've spoken of your Spirit's gift of peace. In the changes and challenges of life, help us to embrace your peace and to live in it. Some today are gripped by fear in their hearts. Lord, remind us all that you are the Good Shepherd who promises to lead us through our trials. And with such trust in you, Enable us to live with real hope that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life as we dwell in your house forever. Confident of your care for us, we pray for the needs of the world, for those who suffer and feel despair, for all who work for peace in the midst of violence, for soldiers, police officers, and all citizens who endure risk for our safety. On this national holiday, we pray for our country. Almighty God, you have given this good land as our heritage. Mindful of your great generosity, nourish in us the desire to do your will. God, you know the problems that we face in this country. We know the different uh, thoughts about ways to solve them. We know the divisions that come from us as we consider the ways forward. We pray, Lord, save us from sub such deep divisions that put our nation at risk. Help us to be a nation where people of many different languages, many different heritage, are united as one people who share a common vision of freedom and justice and liberty for all. Make us an example and an inspiration to peoples and nations around the world. Make us stronger together, Lord, and use us for the good of your world. All of this we pray in Jesus' name, even as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It seems like such a small thing that we do when we place our offerings in the offering plates. But behind that action is the awareness of all that God has given to us 
and our gratitude for God's blessings to us. So let us now bring our tithes and offerings. God, we thank you for the blessings of our country, the blessings of your abundant generosity that we enjoy, for the gifts of home and love, for your presence with us throughout all of our trials, and for the peace that is ours in trusting you. Oh God, we dedicate these gifts that your peace may reign not only in this place, but as far as you reach, give us reach into your world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
hope for all of you a safe and enjoyable celebration of the fourth. And as we think about God's gift of peace, I would encourage you in two ways. The first is be aware of those things that you do that undercut your own peace so that you may avoid them. If you're traveling, stay close to the speed limit and avoid the anxiety of getting that, possibly getting a speeding ticket. I was thinking if you're a student, avoid the anxiety and fear of tests by studying in advance. So um, try to be mindful of anything that you may do that brings turmoil and anxiety into your own life. And the second thing is to remember ways in which God has seen you through in the past. I'm guessing every one of us here has faced a difficult time in the past and thought that we might not survive and life might never be good again, only to be here today once again going forward. So remember that the God who has seen you through in the past is with you now and will see you as you go forward. And trusting in God, may you know greater peace. The grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit be with us all. And together we say, Amen. Amen.